Welcome YouTube. My name is Doug Pexa. I'm an artist. And today I want to talk about seven virtues to becoming a better artist or creator or writer or what have you. These are some good habits to have and this is only going to be part one. I'm not doing all seven today. I also want to say I don't want this to be just a uh, talking head thing. So as I am talking about some of these things, I'm going to do some time-lapse paintings also. Um, I don't know which ones those are going to be yet, so I will talk a little bit about them after I get through what I want to talk about today. So, a long time ago, this is probably two or three years ago now, I was watching something on YouTube. I don't remember who it was from or uh, where I found them. Never saw this person again on YouTube, but they had a seven virtues of becoming a better fill in the blank. And those were specifically do daily work, even if it's just drawing a line. Volume, not perfection. And I'm gonna talk about each one of these, so hold on. Steal like an artist. Continuous learning, don't just stumble around. Rest and play, feedback. Get feedback, lots of it. Create what you love. I'm gonna talk about these, I really, I really enjoyed this and I, I promptly started making notes because I thought there were some great things here, but there were a lot of things that I also had trouble with. Uh, and I wanna kinda talk about that too. And we spent a long time, so uh, a lot of the notes got rethought about and rethought about and rethought about. So right now I kinda feel like this is definitely it's definitely become my own and it's, it's something I like to do myself as an artist, as a creator. And I hope you can use some of these in whatever creative or other outlets that it seems to work well with. So one of the virtues of becoming a better artist, writer, creator, etc. Daily work. Daily work is definitely one of the most important things you can do especially if you are trying to improve your craft or learn that new skill you're always wanting to. Can't draw well? Draw daily, even if it's just a line. This goes for writing. You want to get a better writer? Write every day, even if it's just a sentence. We'll get into this. The idea is that if you get everything out and set up, that you won't stop at just one line. It's a lot of work. You will at least uh, fill up a page, hopefully, or better yet, you get into a groove and draw for hours without even realizing it. Play off the left-right brain thing. A lot of things about right brain, left brain, creativity. The creative side can't tell time. So getting into groove will get you into a timeless place. This will help form those good habits of doing which will make daily work become second nature. You will just find the time to sit down and draw, paint, write, whatever. Habit forming is fragile though. So try to avoid that, ah, screw it mindset. I can do it tomorrow. Also don't sweat it if you can't do it every day. Shoot for five days a week. You need a weekend, right? Whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever it might be. And if you get all seven days to do your daily work, even better but don't stress out that that's the most important thing in this don't stress out because if you're gonna stress out then it be, doesn't become fun and making habits having fun getting in that timeless place is the most important thing you can do really it will be hard definitely at first but it'll get better every day if you're one of those kinds of people Schedule your time at first. Make a meeting for yourself if need be. Just do your daily work. Volume, not perfection. 
I don't like this, this term as much. Volume, not perfection. Let's change that to volume over perfection. Volume over perfection. What? I shouldn't be perfect all the time? No, not when you're trying to learn. New skills, you know, they're tough and you're not gonna be perfect when you're learning. Half of it is just trying to get some uh, muscle memory down, whether it's brain muscle memory or physical muscle memory or eye-hand coordination from pencil, paintbrush, to whatever you're looking at or trying to create. It is about doing, 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 and more doing. That's how you're going to learn. I think this was a Mark Twain quote. Good decisions come from experience. Experience comes from making bad decisions. That's kind of what I'm talking about. To be good, you have to have experience. Experience is done by doing. Doing doesn't always mean good. All right, you got that? Let's say you want to draw hands better. How is this going to happen? Draw hands, and a lot of them. You need to be looking at references too. You know, if you're writing poetry, you need to be looking at poetry and a lot of different kinds of poetry. Look at artists, see what they're doing, how they represent the hand, but also look at actual hands, whether it's photography, your own hand, your significant other's hand, your children's hands. Use a reference because you're learning how to do it. You're not learning to be expressive right now. You're learning how to do it. You know, with a hand example, at first, block in the hand. Very generic, very sketchy, very loose. And just keep doing that. Then start to refine it by spreading the fingers, getting the joints in the right spot. Fix as you go. Nothing wrong with an eraser. Nothing wrong with an eraser. A lot of masters, You'll see in some of their works, you'll see some of the lines that they use to um, make the actual painting, the sketches underneath the final product. Thinking of uh, a specific piece by uh, Degas, uh, one of, um, I think it was one of the ballerinas. Uh, it's at the uh, Minnesota Institute of Art or MIA or whatever they call it now. Don't worry about it being perfect. You can pound out 20 hands, each one taking 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, and they look good. But you're getting the idea of how things should look. Getting it perfect is going to take you double or more time to make it look perfect. And you're probably only gaining a little bit of knowledge, especially when you're not as good. Just get those gestural drawings up, just do it. Whether it's writing or, or video or whatever it might be. When you're done, do it again. When you're done, do it again. Each time, refining and learning and experiencing. As you move forward, use a harder reference or challenge yourself to be more this or that or the other thing in writing if it was that or better transitions if you're working on video. And when you're trying to learn, be conscious while learning. Don't go willy-nilly. We'll get more into this. And don't worry about the epic fail. You learn most when you fail epically. Steal like an artist. Not to be confused with Picasso's quote, good artists copy, great artists steal. I really hated this one from this guy. Uh, it's based off of a book titled The Same Thing, where the author, uh, Austin, Cleon basically took a bunch of quotes to justify his concept of steal like an artist. So basically, he stole his entire concept from quotes with very little substance. Anyway, can you tell I didn't like the book? That's a whole other subject. The big problem with this is the word steal and all the connotations it brings with it. But I guess it's shocking. So it grabs attention. It's pretty much a marketing thing. The intent with this word is to be controversial or edgy. It however is stupid in my opinion. 
It's a stupid way of saying to be influenced by many. Take what you like and spit the rest out. Influence, muse, inspiration is all good. And we all have those aha moments when looking, reading, listening to others' works. Translate what you like into your own work, style, and lexicon, but keep it yours with your personality in it. Reshape and remodel it. Make it yours. There's one more aspect of this I want to touch on, which is copying of other artists. This practice has been going on probably since the beginning of art. It is a way to copy, to make homage, or just to learn from famous artists, or not so famous artists, or artists that you like or want to learn how they did something. New techniques are always awesome to learn. Isn't that what YouTube's all about? Cal, you can make the art your own and use it as a stepping stone. Credit where credit is due. If you're working from a Lucian Freud painting, credit it as such. After Lucian Freud's, girl with a white dog. Or study of Rembrandt's, the anatomy lesson by Dr. Nicholas uh, Tulip. So instead of steal like an artist, I think this one would be better, better titled maybe uh, be influenced by many and all. But so these are three of the seven virtues for becoming a better fill in the blank artist, writer, musician, whatever. I will get to the other four probably in two more episodes depending on how long I feel like I'm gonna ramble. Wait for them. If you wanna, wanna see what I have to say about them, please subscribe. And of course, a like is always a nice thing too. Don't have to, but it's always nice. In closing, I just wanna ask, does this resonate with you? If so, how? Do you want me to elaborate on one of these a little more? You know, like do a whole, whole big thing on one, just one of them, because I can probably ramble on for days on some of this stuff. Is there something I missed? Something you think is important um, virtue of creating. Love to hear that. If you have any ideas, any thoughts, please comment below. I will respond to every comment I get. On that note, let's talk about the paintings I just did. I want to talk a couple seconds about uh, the paintings uh, that were in this series. First one is from my Hipster King series. Uh, I know it's a female, so they get called Hipster Queens. I did a little uh, talk about uh, the Hipster Kings in a former video. I will link it up here, wherever. Uh, it was just kind of a fun little painting, uh, kind of a girl doing her thing. It's uh, actually in oil paints. Both of them were actually in oil paints. Um, and they're painted on coasters. I also have a video about why I paint on coasters sometimes. Second painting uh, was a painting of a porcini mushroom. I know some people are going to probably say it looks a little phallic. It might be. Yeah. Anyway, it is actually a porcini mushroom. Uh, that one has been sold. The other one has not. So if you're interested in the other one, let me know. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, get it to you.